Welcome to Poke Salad. We'll be having a bounty of conversation today with several people from the cities of Monmouth and Independence who are responsible for having things work for us from water to electricity to business development. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Poke Salad. With us this morning we have Sean Irvine from the City of Independence. Sean is the Economic Development Director there with lots of exciting things going on this <laughs> summer and beyond. Sean, thanks so much for being here today. Uh, happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about what's happening in Independence. Well, there's a lot going on uh, for starters. Coming up real soon on June 14th, there's a, uh, a, mu a rock music festival going on in the amphitheater. First time we've had something like that. There's going to be, I believe, there are up to 15 bands now, including a couple of headliners that are nationally known, been on the radio and everything. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Well, where can people get tickets and information about that? Uh, it's, uh, the, the website is uh, uh, Riverview. Uh, I'm forgetting the website. It's <laughs> <laughs> Rivers Edge Music Fest 2014.com. Wow. And it's got a link to the ticket to all the information there as well as where you can get tickets. Wonderful. That sounds very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to be outside. That's there a beautiful the venue. The guy the guy's really excited about this show and if it goes well he wants to do more. Good. That's yeah. wonderful. Right here in Independence. Yep. So tell me, how long have you been with the city? I've been with the city about eight and a half years. Mm -hmm. How'd you get here? Uh, I took a windy route. I was actually down in South America with the Peace Corps before this. Really? Uh, yeah, I spent about four years working with municipal uh, development down there in Paraguay. What's that mean? Um, essentially, I spent two years working with a small city government. Um, they were actually a new democracy. They had been a dictatorship for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and they were still kind of learning what it meant for the government to actually listen to the people and for the people to actually tell the government what needs to happen. So I was working to set up neighborhood associations, get them to you know, connect with the city government. I was working with the city government on transparency issues, and you know, yes, you really probably should pay attention to what the, uh, what the public is telling you. Uh, it, was really, it was really interesting. So I assume you speak Spanish. Yeah, I speak. I actually spoke Spanish already before going down there. Uh, I was in a Spanish immersion program growing up, but I also learned the uh, the second language down there, Guarani, which is an indigenous language. My goodness, do you still speak that? I do. I you know I haven't practiced it for about right. eight years, so I don't speak <laughs> it as well. <laughs> so how how was it that you were in an immersion program? Are you from Oregon? Yeah, I'm from Oregon. I grew up in Eugene, and actually I was in uh, it, these programs are now fairly common. But I was in the first program in Oregon. It was a uh, uh, pilot program where half the day was taught in Spanish and half was taught in English uh, and so from second grade all the way through high school that's the way my my school went learned about you know global cultures Latin American history culture the whole nine yards so you know it's kind of interesting going down to Paraguay because I felt like I already knew the place when I got there isn't that something were you just out of high school or college when uh, you went? Yeah, it was a couple years out of college mm -hmm. yeah, did I, you go to college there in Eugene no I went up in Tacoma at the University of Puget Sound yeah right so you went a little bit north you know you got to get away occasionally <laughs> And then you really got away yeah. to South America. <laughs> exactly. And you were there for? Almost four years. Normally, normally it's a two-year stint. Uh, I liked it enough. I stayed a third year as the coordinator for the program, for the municipal services program. So I moved into the capital and essentially provided technical support to all the volunteers out in the field. And that was really fun because I basically got to drive and travel all over the country visiting volunteers in their sites, seeing what they were doing, you know, figuring out what kind of resources they needed to be, to be successful and connecting with those resources. So even at that young age, you already were, after a couple short years, into a management position. More or less, yeah. Yeah, and got to really travel and mm -hmm. do. And so when I first moved to this community, I had some questions about, you know, grants or what to do in this certain cases. And I remember asking around, and your name came up quite frequently. <laughs> I actually met with you uh -huh. about, you know, you're the go-to guy who knows how to get things done. <laughs> and so I just wonder, um, you have that reputation, and there are a lot of things happening in Independence. And so I just wondered how you made the leap from Paraguay to Independence, Oregon. It was really a stroke of luck. I was back home for a couple of months uh, between, so I, after my third year, I came home for a couple of months, traveled around the U.S. for, like, for a, a month or so, and then I was going to go, I went back down to South America for four months to train the new Peace Corps volunteers. Before I did that, I saw a job listing for a, a community development technician at the City of Independence. 
And uh, the job description was very similar to what I had been doing in, in South America, working with volunteer groups, neighborhood associations, grant writing, those types of things. And so I applied, didn't hear anything, went back to South America, and uh, my dad called me about half, halfway through my, my last term there and said, hey, this city wants to interview you. So I ended up doing a phone interview from South America. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, and they hired me over the phone. And so you came right back to a job. Yep. What was your degree in? Um, it was a, you know, it was a, a major in politics with a minor in biology. Mm -hmm. I was actually more interested in ecology and, and sort of public policy issues. But before I joined the Peace Corps, I actually got a little more interested in city planning and how you, essentially how you create great communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got a lot of practice doing that. Yeah, and it's, you know, the <clears throat> what I really enjoy doing is I, I'm a kind of person that I know a little bit about a lot of things. I'm, no, I'm not an expert in anything, but I know a little bit about a lot of things. And so I really enjoy connecting people. You mm -hmm. know, people have a question about this or they need information on that, and I'll have crossed paths with that information at some point, and I can say, you need to go talk to this person, you need to go see that program. And that, you know, it's that making those connections is really fun for me. And do you find that the longer you're in a community, that becomes easier? Oh, yeah. I mean, the longer you are, you are somewhere, the more people you get to know, the more opportunities you learn about, you know, the more assets that, are, that you discover, it's just a lot easier. So you, you got hired as a, a job that has a different title than what you do. Yeah, so I, I was hired as a, as a community development technician, essentially the assistant to the community development director. That's focused on sort of city planning, land use, zone changes, things like that. Uh, and my job was working with sort of the, as the volunteer coordinator, working with you know, neighborhood groups, downtown association, and also a lot of grant writing. Um, over time, my, I kind of morphed into a larger, different role. And when the economy tanked, uh, we kind of decided we needed to put more of an emphasis on developing business in town. And that's where we kind of changed my title, took a little bit of the zone change, you know, planning commission type stuff off and put on more business development, entrepreneurship, uh, business recruitment, and, and, and retention also. Mm -hmm. And did that, so did that require grant writing, or had you been doing that before? I had already done uh, quite a bit of grant writing before uh, arriving at City of Independence, so that was one of the reasons they hired me, was I had pretty good experience with that. And uh, you know, most of my grant writing is focused more on parks development and, and things like that, but uh, you know, there are some, uh, some economic development you know, programs that I've been able to help fund with, uh, with some grants. So were you in on that major renovation that happened at Riverview Park? I, you know, I got here just as that was finishing up, actually. I got here, actually, it was 2005, when, and that was the year, they, the summer they finished the, the park. So I got here right after it finished. But I was able to kind of jump in on that, mo that momentum because mm -hmm. the park, the downtown, all of that had really created some nice energy, and we were able to use that to continue moving forward and get a lot more stuff done. So what is it that you do <laughs> on a normal day? I know you must do a million things. <laughs> but what's your, what's your goal or what's your hope? You know, I, again, it goes back to connecting people. Um, I've, I, I've gotten a little more away from the getting my hands dirty, writing grants and, and you know, really on the ground things and more, again, just connecting people, identifying opportunities and, and figuring out where, where we can, you know, make a, you know, make a, a beneficial move. So, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the fun and the, the annoyance of this job is it's just a tremendous variety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of days ago, I basically spent my whole lunch hour having a conversation about how to bring data centers to town with a real estate broker who's interested in that. The next hour I spent t uh, working on a script for the All-America City presenta award presentation we're, we're, that we're working on uh, that we're, we have to go to Denver to pr present soon. Um, after that, it was a, uh, oh, where did it, I can't even remember anymore. I said, did you ever get to lunch? No, actually, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was just one of these, you know, I, I was at the end of the day, I just kind of looked back and said, I, you know, it's just, you just jump, you just, you're screaming on one thing yeah. and it's done and then you just go jump, you know, mm -hmm. whole hog into something else and go screaming on that for another hour or so and then jump into something totally different. Right, And it's, right. Uh, it's a little jarring, but it's fun too. Well, tell me a little bit about that parade, I mean, the... Um, the All-America City thing? Yeah, that so, is something very exciting. Yeah, that's happening. pretty exciting. Um, so the All-America City Award is a national award given by the National Civic League. It's, it's the oldest award, oldest and most prestigious award that a city can receive in, the, in this country. And it's focused on essentially communities that 
uh, get their, their public engaged, that, that they, uh, they have civic engagement, uh, innovation, uh, you know, inspiration, inclusiveness you know, with, with their projects and what they do within the community. Um, and so we put in an application. It's a pretty lengthy you know, written application about all the different things we've done. It's based on essentially things you've done or accomplished in the last five years. Um, I don't know how many people, how many cities originally applied. I think it's usually between 60 and 100. Mm -hmm. They narrowed it down to 23 finalist cities. Those cities have to send a delegation to Denver to the uh, National Civic League conference to do a 10-minute presentation followed by a 10-minute question and answer to the, a judging panel, uh, and then they will pick 10 uh, award winners. So it's a pretty it's a pretty big deal. So is a delegation from Independence going? Yeah, yeah. We've we put a pulled a group together. We're still kind of figuring out exactly. You know, like, like I said, I'm I'm working on the script right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but kind of sort of building the plane as you're flying it. More or less, because they don't give you. They, you know, this was we found out we were finalists uh, about a month and a half ago, and we're leaving in two weeks. Oh my! So we had two months to essentially figure out. You know, raise money to go. Yeah. Figure out who's going to go figure out the presentation. There's a, there's a, they call it a civic action fair, so sort of a trade show type thing where cities can show off what they've done and talk about it. There's, there's all these different aspects to this and just no time to do it. No, <laughs> right, right. So back here at home, good luck with that, by the way. Thank you. I'm sure you're going to bode well. It's going to bode well for you. What's going on that's exciting in the city, or potentially? Yeah, so the, the thing I always find really exciting, is, you know, that I think is great is our large manufacturers in town are all growing fast and hiring. Uh, you know, if you're interested in a job, go talk to Marquis Spa, go talk to uh, Medallion Cabinetry, uh, also known as LK, or uh, Forest River Cargo Trailers because they are all hiring right now and they, they pay pretty good wages. Wow. Uh, and so that's great to have. I mean, they're all, they're essentially above pre-recession hiring levels that right now. That is some good news, yes, right? Yes, it really is. Wow. Uh, you know, to the point where we're, you know, we're hoping there may be some expansions or something like that going on in the near future. Um, you know, aside from that, in the, you know, hopefully in the, in the near term, you're where, you know the, the Valley Concrete site in downtown Independence? So if you're on Main Street, the, if you go behind the, build, yes. the Main Street buildings yes. towards the river, there's a, a gravel site. It's where they right. mix the concrete. You don't really see it. Yeah, you don't really Street. see right. it, but you can see it from the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And so um, they, right now it's a concrete batch plant. They're actually moving off site shortly, and they're looking to sell that site uh, for redevelopment. And so we were able to work with them and got a grant from the state to do some conceptual planning for that for that site, because obviously it's this is uh, you know 18 acres, uh, some of it's floodplain, so it's not mm -hmm. buildable. But there's going to be probably eight to ten acres of buildable space, you know, thousand feet of river frontage on the Willamette River, mm -hmm. right between the amphitheater and our new Civic Center, uh, you know, right in the historic downtown wine yes. country, the whole nine right, yards. Right. So, you know, we think there's some really exciting possibilities that could happen there. Um, you know, obviously riverfront residential, you know, whether it's apartments, condos, or some kind of, you know, other, you know lower scale, lower, uh, you know, single, uh, single level housing. Uh, we're really excited about the possibilities of a hotel, though. Oh. Uh, you know, the Polk County is really underserved in terms of lodging. That's right. And uh, with the university, with wine, with, mm -hmm. with our industries bringing business to town, um, there's just nowhere good for people to stay. You know, no. You know, you know, I mean, there's, there's a few hotels, but they're kind of on the lower right. end. And there's no good quality place for people to stay. Right. And especially for the wine industry, that's a problem. I know. I own a bed and breakfast, and I tell you, it's good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> these, these limited numbers of, of places to stay. Exactly. Yeah, and lots of people come here yeah. from Canada, from all over the country to taste wine in the summer. I'm always amazed that, yeah, the, I mean, Oregon's wine industry, and, and <laughs> you know, Yamhill County, McMinnville, you know, New, Newburgh, Carlton gets all the attention, but Polk County is really high quality and, yep. and really, and in terms of quantity as well. So, you know, we figure if we can't get a decent hotel on the Willamette River in a historic downtown, it just ain't happening. Well, <laughs> right, but that is really something to shoot for. Yeah. I think that is really something to shoot for. So that's, that's, that's one of my main projects now is trying to, I've been talking to a lot of hotel developers, we're doing a feasibility study, we're just trying to do everything we can to remove the, the question marks and the, mm -hmm. the perceived risk and right. you know, just really understand right. the, the opportunities and constraints of doing something here. Right. Well, I come from a place where there's a lot of water and, you know, there are a lot of buildings built up high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's, there's a way to do it, right? If there's a will, there's a way. So exactly. Hopefully you'll find someone as innovative and as forward thinking as you guys have been mm -hmm. in getting that site prepared. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. We're excited about it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just very grateful for all that you're doing mm -hmm. for the city. It seems like a nonstop 
kind of fun job in a sense, but I'm sure, you know, trying to be balanced in your life and move forward and all that stuff is sometimes a challenge. Yeah. So I really appreciate the fact that you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> it's a great town and you're making it better. And I really appreciate the fact that you're here today. And if people wanted to contact you, they could go to the city website and find you there. Yep, you can go to the city website. My phone number is 503-837-1191. Boy, you may be sorry you said that. Direct line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean, for Absolutely. being here. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Polk Salad. Thanks for staying tuned. I'm so excited that we have with us this morning Chuck Thurman from Monmouth Power and Light. He's the guy that keeps us all lit. That's probably not what I should say. But <laughs> he's the guy that keeps our lights on in, in Monmouth and beyond. So thank you so much, Chuck, for joining us here this morning. Well, thanks for inviting me over. But I'd like to clarify one thing, Terry. Yes. I've got a great staff back at the office right. that keeps the lights on for us. I mean, we all work together as a great team to, to make that happen. It's I not appreciate, one person. No, right. But I appreciate that, especially in those times when it's stormy. I see, I remember a few times in years back, power goes out, everybody panics. I'm sure you're used to that, right? Oh, absolutely. The long hours, the cold days. But, but you know, when you get that light back on and that customer smiling inside, it makes it all worthwhile. Good. It does. Good. Now, how did you get to this position? I mean, did you, as a little boy, did you say, hey, I want to grow up and turn people's electricity on? <laughs> as a little boy, I grew up in Everett, Washington, in Snohomish County, and I was out on a foggy day, and you know how you hear the buzz? that's kind of happening in the power lines. Mm -hmm. I was watching that and wanting to know what makes that happen. That and so right? I kind of held on to that as I was going through and I went off to school at UW and I was in business and I needed to work. And I saw this advertisement about working on the power lines and then it reminded me back of my days of the fog on the insulators and I just decided this is what I want to do. Really? And I went out that way through the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers and I became a lineman. And then I decided, you know, there comes a time when climbing the poles is, is great to do, it's good for you, but maybe I need to do something else and make a difference in the industry overall. And that got me into management and on through different organizations. Now, how did, so you were in Washington, but I seem to remember that you came to Monmouth by way of California. I did. I was at Snohomish County PUD, that's 12th largest public in the nation, and retired. And my wife and I were going to Snowbird, and we said, you know, retirement for me, five months, great. For my wife, not so good. She <laughs> said, maybe you need to look at something to do. <laughs> so I went out to a municipal in Southern California, and a wonderful utility, and decided that was a thing for me. Well, along come grandkids, and they're all up here in the Northwest. One's in Forest Grove, and one's up in Everett, Washington. So we wanted to be part of our grandkids' lives growing up, and we decided to come back up this way. Mm -hmm. And Monmouth was, I term it the little big town. How come? Because it's a small town, but has great big ideas, great big feeling, great big heart, and, and they're not afraid to show that. Mm. They aren't a little town. They're just small in population. That's true. That's true. So, Very well said. How long were you in California? Seven years. So Seven years mm -hmm. before the grandkids drew you back up this way. Absolutely. Uh -huh. and, and they're phenomenal. My son has a son. My daughter has a daughter. And we see them as often as we possibly can. And Monmouth in the summertime, I can tell you from experience, is pretty fun for the grandkids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. So tell me, um, you don't have to explain it to us because but I, cause I think that would take too long. But I oftentimes wonder, where really does electricity come from? You know, it's kind of like when I get in my car, I start my car, and I move in it, and I work it, but I have no idea how that happens. Sort of magic when you flip on the switch. But you probably do know from start to finish. Putting it very simply, when the water flows through the dam, the turbines turn, the turbines generate electricity, we get 100% of our electricity from Bonneville Power, all green power, from the hydro. And so the turbines catch it and capture it and keep it somewhere. The water makes the turbine spin. Uh -huh. The energy is created from that spinning. From there it travels down the line and you really can't capture it and hold it like you would a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. It has to go out and be used somewhere, someplace. Immediately. And so you see the great big lines that travel through our countryside when we drive around. It comes in on that. We have a south substation and a north substation that the energy is delivered down into those. 
we transform that down to a little bit smaller and then out to everybody's houses. So that's what happens at substations. Mm -hmm. The big energy comes in, you turn it into little energy, so and comes to our houses. We bring it in at 115,000 volts and we bring that down to 12,470 volts at our substation all the way down to your house at 120, 240 volts Depending to get it way down there so you can be isn't comfortable. Isn't that amazing? When you were cooking that cheese and toast for <laughs> breakfast you told me about earlier, that's how we get it there for you. Wow, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That really is. It really is. And, and probably one of the biggest things for our industry, Terry, is a lot of our projects are not seen. Mm. We're out there, and you might see us trim a tree here and there, but you don't see a whole lot of what we've got left over because we're trying to get lines underground. We're trying to get uh -huh. good reliability. So we work out there, but you don't see a monument put up or you don't see a building erected because right. we did that. But something has to serve that building, so my staff works behind the scenes to make that happen, and they do a phenomenal job. So it's kind of like you you don't get called until something goes wrong. Or you don't get noticed, maybe, until the power goes out. I mean, I don't walk around my house going, oh, I flipped the switch, I'm so glad the power's on. <laughs> which, <laughs> you know? which, you're right, in, in a lot of cases it takes something a little more catastrophic like mm -hmm. that. The, the only other time we probably hear a lot from customers is, uh, especially here in, in a college community, I could not have used that much power. My bill's too high. Oh. And, and when students are now on their own for the first time, because mom and dad always take care of the bills, <laughs> they notice right away. And so we get a lot of those type do of calls, really? too. really? So how do you handle those? It's a chance to... Oh, we, we gladly come out and, and do an audit at their place and explain to them how power is consumed, what are the highest you know, power uh, consuming objects, and help them understand the, the nuts and bolts of saving electricity, turning things off when they're gone, or what is consuming. We have so many electronic prod products now that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. When you plug in that cell phone, when you turn on that microwave, when you do all these other things, you're using a lot of energy. And power tools in the summer I absolutely yeah and mammoth power and light because of what you do and the nature of what you do you're probably a lot more informed about energy and conservation and I've heard a lot of things uh, since you've been here heading this department um, about how you guys are trying to get the word out there well absolutely that's one of the biggest charges the students again it, it's the education about electricity for the existing customers and homeowners that are here it's how can we help you get better use of older products or maybe replace older products. Mm -hmm. Let's get some education going about electricity and its consumption, but let's find some rebate programs that might help you get better insulation for your house so you're warmer and more comfortable. And do maybe you we change help out some that? windows. Absolutely we do. We so if, if you were going to say to the average consumer, whether they're mom with power and light or whomever, um, what are some of the few simple things people can do? to conserve energy. Control your thermostat. Whether it's gas or electric, control that thermostat. That is a very, very high consumer of electricity. And what's your recommendation? I said it at 68. 68. And then that's, uh, it doesn't matter time of year, 68. Hmm. I'll leave it alone. That makes sense. So you mm -hmm. just leave it go and it'll regulate itself. Exactly. And so you said something about replacing windows. The older windows could be single pane windows. They could be double pane, but they've lost their gas content in between. Ah. Upgrading to new windows, and we have several rebate programs available for ductless heat pumps, heat pumps, windows, insulation, a whole host of things. We, we even do appliance rebates because on your washing machine, if you've got a better um, more technologically advanced machine, you're not using as much electric hot water, oh. which is a second high consumer. So older machines tend to consume more mm -hmm. electricity and energy. Through the use of the hot water and the water that goes through. Mm -hmm. And that also helps on the other side of the, the public works department and the water consumption. Right, right. And that so helps you conserve. It's really not just about, I guess because this is your business, your industry, and you know a lot about it, I'm guessing it's really not just about keeping people's bills lower, although that is important to all of us, but it's really about taking care of the energy resources that we have. Oh, overall, absolutely, absolutely. And, and when we say it, it might be the industry I chose to go into, but it's your power company. Mm. It, it sounds a little cliche, but every customer here at Monmouth is the owner of this company. And, and we treat you that way. When you come through our front door, 
we don't look at you as, as though there may be another problem coming in. We find a, a can-do attitude to say, how can we help you with what your needs are? Now, we, is, is that what you meant by saying, oh, you said you worked for a PUD, which I'm guessing is a public utilities district. Correct. And then you went to a municipal. Correct. So you're using sort of um, industry lingo here. So a municipal means owned by a city? Owned by a city. And so that's a different from a public utility. In some aspects, it's a governmental side of how it is different. They are both public power. Mm -hmm. I chose a long time ago to not go into private utility industry. The rules, regulations, and the idea that you had to pay a stockholder money, you have to make extra money out of this industry to pay that that stockholder oh. over here. Public power, you don't do that. And you make You're it from my your, stockholder. Yeah, you make it from the customers. And then we look at what's it costing us to operate this company and how can we do that better, more efficient, so that you, the customer, get the break. As a matter of fact, you probably noticed last year when we reduced rates here in the city yes. of Monmouth. We Which look, was phenomenal. We look diligently at that to see what can we do to assist our customers. We're in the same, I am a customer of Monmouth, right. you're a customer. <laughs> I don't want to pay any more for service than I need to or have to. So we looked real hard at that to That's get the wonderful. deal. That's and, and it's amazing given the times, I think, when everybody's talking about, you know, interest rates and bills going up and all this sort of seemingly bad news that you guys sort of gave us a, an early Christmas present. <laughs> well, and, and again, we pay the same bills, we look at the same things, and can we do without this for a while? What's the impact if we do? If the impact says I'm going to have to come back to you in, in two years and raise it up double, then we're not going to do that. Right. But if the impact says we can manage this and we can give you that break, you're the ones that put the faith in us, form in this company, we need to do that. I'm very conservative in my approach to budgeting, in my approach to how I handle a lot of things mm -hmm. we do. I'm not conservative in the reliability. I'm not conservative in the customer service. Mm -hmm. But in the management of the money side, we need to be conservative. That's my dollars, too. Right. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that, for one. And I wanted to ask, what's your favorite part of being the sort of director there at Monmouth Power & Light? Boy, that's a good question. I've got fantastic employees. But How many? I, we have six in our division. Oh, wow. You get so all that small. done with six people? Fantastic people. When, when the Mercy. group works together, it works very well. Probably the best for me is when a customer has a problem, they don't know how they're going to handle that problem, and they're distraught. Mm -hmm. And we can take that problem, turn it around, get the customer a little more comfortable about it and help them find solutions. And it isn't just one person looking for that solution. Mm -hmm. The team gets together and says, okay, how can I have be a part of this? How can I be a part of that? And then we take that outreach into the community. I love doing the uh, Christmas parade. Mm -hmm. I love doing the Fourth of July parade as part of the Rotary Group. All of that, th that just builds community. Mm -hmm. And when, when you have that trust, when people come in, it helps to build that community. Yeah, I know my grandsons love seeing the big power and light trucks come through, you know. I mean, they just get very excited about it. So I think it's important that you're out there in the public and you're doing the parades and doing the fun things besides um, just showing up when people need you. Well, hopefully they don't see us too often that way because that means things are going well. <laughs> the power's right. staying on and, and their, their business, they're happy with their business. Yeah, so. yeah, well, I'm happy with it, and I know many people are. And I really appreciate what you and, and the staff down there at Monmouth Power and Light do for us. And I really appreciate you being here this morning. Well, one last thought before yes. I end. My phone number down there is 503-838-3526. If you have an energy efficiency question, if you have any questions with regards to your power service, give us a call. And it's not just me. My whole staff will be there willing to help. Well, thank you. There you go. You got it straight from the director's mouth. Thanks so much for being here with us. You're welcome, Terry. Thank you, and we'll be right back. This morning, we are having a bounty of conversation with those people who keep our communities going. We've spoken about businesses coming to town. We've spoken about keeping the lights on. And now with us this morning, we have Russ Cooper, who's the director of Monmouth Public Works and just about keeps everything else running. Thanks, Russ, for being here with us this morning. It's great to be here. 
So you are keeping the water on, you're keeping the streets on, and doing all sorts of other things with a staff of how many? Oh, uh, there's nine of us down there nine. at Public Works. Keeps yeah. all that going. Yeah, we, we do uh, water, uh, sewer, streets, parks, and uh, a whole mix of other things. <laughs> so every time we turn on the tap, thank you, right? That's you correct. You guys are keeping our water clean. Yep, we here in take Monmouth. it from the, from the source, we treat it, uh, run it through pipes, uh, that, that's our transportation system, and get it to, to the faucet. That's correct. And so you have this sort of um, alliance or working relationship with the City of Independence in that regard. Get water here. Does the water come from the river? Uh, no, our, our uh, sources of water are wells. Uh, oh. So we're not taking it out of the river. Uh, it's coming out of the ground. Uh, we, we are uh, uh, working on a, a joint project with Independence called mm -hmm. the Willamette Wellfield. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we're both in the water industry. We're both producing water. Uh, that's the only uh, real area that we're working jointly uh, in regards to water. Which is pretty important. It is. A uh, uh, source of, of water and water in general is, is really a driver for uh, the economy. Uh, it uh, uh, helps businesses, businesses that use water. It, it keeps uh, uh, the building gr uh, going and, mm -hmm. and growing. If we don't mm -hmm. have water, uh, people can't come to Polk County. Right, so, they can't uh, live here basically that's correct. if we don't have enough water. And I've been hearing reports, various ones, I'm not uh, as married to the industry as you are, about water shortages, different water supplies drying up, and so you guys are forward thinking and trying to get ahead of this yeah, before we, we have the population that actually needs it, I assume. That's correct, yeah. We're always looking 20 years out at least, uh, trying to make sure that we have the sources of water to, uh, to get us there. Uh, you talk about the um, the the shortage of water, and when you look down in in the the south, mm -hmm. uh, Texas, um, you see that uh, uh, water is as costly as oil down there, and, that, and right? that uh, um, folks are are trying to figure out how are we going to get water, where do we get water from? You see a lot of uh, reports on drought. Uh, thankfully, uh, here in uh, the Northwest, while we have a lot of water, Polk County is kind of interesting in that uh, we don't have a lot of groundwater. Our groundwater sources are, are relatively limited, mm. and so um, uh, Monmouth uh, is uh, and does have some, some water rights on the Willamette River, uh, and that's some of that forward uh, looking out, making sure that we have water mm -hmm. into the future. Mm -hmm. And then you do some exciting things like managing the sewer lagoons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> A job we'd all love to do, I'm sure. You, you laugh, you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep a track of everything that we flush and rinse down the pipes and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, so, so that we look at, we're, we're on both ends of, of the faucet. We, <laughs> we get it to the house and we also take it from the house. And, and uh, that's through the, through the sewer system and we, we treat that water. And uh, it's an important part. We, we look at ourselves as um, uh, health professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're looking out uh, uh, providing clean, health, safe, uh, safe water. Uh, but we're also protecting the environment with uh, what we do with the waste uh, that's coming from the homes. Yeah, that's a lot of waste. It is. And you guys have sewer lagoons where that sits and you treat it then. That's correct. Uh, just recently, citizens uh, uh, should be aware that we uh, did a major upgrade at our wastewater plant where Ooh. we uh, improved uh, what we call the headworks, kind of where that waste comes in. We're taking out the, the plastic products and products that, that are not uh, treatable, getting those out into oh. a dumpster and, and off to goodness. the landfill, but then also uh, improved the, uh, the, the treatment process for um, making that water clean. That is amazing, and I think it's something that most of us never ever think about. And we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to, and you probably don't want us to, so thank you for yeah. that. And so other than that, you're doing streets. Yep, transportation. I noticed also, too, I don't know how much you had to do with it, Main Street in Monmouth looks incredible. Thank you. And I think last year, was it, or two years ago, you guys did a major re-renovation of the whole downtown That's from the highway downtown. Yeah, yeah that's correct, and, and, and that was a great project. Uh, the the uh, it had it was actually a two-phase project. Mm -hmm. uh, there was part of town that was done about uh, ten years ago, and and uh, looking for the funds to do a project like that, uh, uh, those don't come around easily. And so it's got to be a lot of money, right? It it, it yes, it is like uh, millions of dollars. Uh, 
Less than that. Less, less than that. Less okay. than a million. <laughs> less than a million. Oh wow. Yeah, but but the uh, the benefit is is great. That's one of those things that uh, uh, in my job when I get to drive down Main Street and see an improvement project mm -hmm. like that that. Uh, um, I think the citizens can be proud of a project oh, like yeah. that and, and enjoy it. And probably not appreciate fully what it took to get, you know, from my perspective, I see the beautiful lamp posts and I see the flowers and the sidewalks and the landscaping and the bump outs, but I have no idea the undergirding of all that, right. you know, having had that done. And even when it's not so sexy a project, if you will, you other streets you have to dig up sometimes and keep going and the potholes and all that stuff yeah. in the city, right? Yeah, Just regular routine. That's true of all utilities. They wear out over time or they're, or they're not uh, built to the capacity uh, to meet the growth of town as it's growing. And so uh, with that Main Street project, we, we put a new water line in the, in the Main Street. And uh, those processes are, are tough on the local businesses mm. or the residents who live there. And, and so we were really grateful for the, the businesses. They really worked with us. We tried to uh, make that process as, as painless as possible. And, uh, uh, but again, uh, there we've installed uh, utilities and infrastructure that will take this community, allow it to grow, and, and move it on um, beyond today. Amazing. And then you mentioned something about the parks. What is it that you guys at Public Works do in the parks? Primarily, uh, as as a department, uh, we're uh, charged with keeping the main, maintaining the parks. And so we uh, bring a couple of uh, uh, seasonal workers in during the summer to help keep the bathrooms and the garbage. Uh, clean and picked up. Uh, we the landscaping is done through a, a, a landscape service. A contractor uh, does that for us, and then uh, we get to do uh, uh, large capital projects, which we've got. Uh, what's a capital one project mean? Yeah, now, if I'm not in your project? if I'm not in your profession and you're using that lingo, yeah. what does that mean to me, the average person? Yeah. These are the sexy projects, <laughs> I guess we'll call them. Uh, using your term from from a little bit ago. Okay. It, it's uh, it would be uh, an example is the the new splash fountain in Main Street Park. That's a capital mm. project. It's a large investment by the uh, city uh, to the benefit of the public. Oh, my grandchildren, thank you for that. Yeah. And thank you. I know last year for the Fourth of July festival, we were supposed to have the Main Street Fountain going, right? Yeah. It's the big, and the fountain came in from Portland, I think, where it was cast, big concrete. Vancouver. Vancouver, and you had the wonderful job of saying, this isn't right. right. We can't accept this. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now, we weren't happy at the time because we wanted a fountain just like you did. But see, it's that kind of responsibility, I think, that makes it well worth the wait. Yeah, that that uh, that's a that was a tough decision. I guess you know, it the, was because you knew decision, that we were having yeah, July Fourth. That's a few correct. Days. That's correct. The easy decision would be to say, "I know it's not right, but everybody expects it there and, and allow it to be installed." And uh, yet, uh, I knew that, that it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was sent it back. It delayed the project a little bit. The the actual you know flipping of the switch a little bit, but. Uh, uh, today, when I drive uh, there, go to the park, take my kids to play yeah. in that, uh, you know, I know that it was done right, and, and right. I can be proud of that. And well, I know, and we are proud of it. Yeah. And I was going to say, I guess that because you're a parent, you kind of had that experience of, you know, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> It, this isn't the way it's, it, it's it was even be. better my my neighbor who has kids was actually planning on having a birthday party there to play in the, the, the fountain and, and all of that so mm -hmm. it was real fun to be able mm -hmm. to say uh, delay that party a few mm -hmm. a few weeks mm -hmm. yeah so um are you from monmouth i'm not i'm uh, from portland uh, i came to monmouth to uh, uh go to school at western oregon university did you really yeah to be a public works director? Yeah, yeah, because they have a public works director <laughs> program at, uh, at uh, Western. Obviously, no. we're kidding. <laughs> I came to uh, Western to be a teacher, elementary ed teacher. Is I went through right? the program, got my degree in elementary education. Uh, what I found out about myself is that uh, two, two things that were, uh, while, through, you know, while going through that process, mm -hmm. uh, that were instrumental in, in leading me toward uh, public works. The the first was that I'm an outdoor dog. I like to be outside. Uh, as a school teacher, uh, you're not outside unless you want to take your kids out there all the right, time. Right, right. Uh, and then the, the other thing is that uh, at the end of the day, uh, I like to see a product uh, 
out of my time what mm -hmm. I've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, teaching doesn't lend itself. Our teachers, uh, they put a lot of time in, they put a lot of effort in, and, and at the end of the day, at the end of the school year, they may not see what they've done, you know. And, and so that was, that was tough for me. And, and uh, when I uh, was going to school, I was working in uh, the Public Works Department as a seasonal uh, worker doing, oh, the, doing the park cleanup. You, it was like a college job. It was, mm -hmm. it was. And so that's how I got started with the city. Uh, after uh, graduating from Western, uh, there was a position open at the time. Uh, um, having learned those things that I learned, I decided, uh, I think I'll go into public works. And uh, got my start in there and uh, have spent the last uh, uh, all 24 years. 24 years? Yeah in Monmouth Public Works. Yeah. And so I assume your wife is here, your kids are here, everybody's in Monmouth now. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, coming from Portland uh, to Monmouth, uh, Monmouth is a wonderful small community, uh, but it has what I, what I term as culture. And mm -hmm. the university brings that culture to the town and, and keeps uh, some activity and, and liveliness to the community and really enjoy that. I agree. I agree very much. It's a great place to live and be. Yeah. And so you've been the director of, of Monmouth Public Works for how long now? Uh, I think we're two years. Two yeah. years. Going wow. On, going on year number three. So you've had some, you had like the major, some major capital projects in this two years. It, it, I mean, it's been a painful, <laughs> it's been a painful two years, yes. Yeah. I mean, you came in and hit the ground running, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? uh, many, many millions of uh, dollars, it seems like, of, of capital projects in the last couple of years. And I, do you have more coming up? And we have a, a couple of smaller projects. One, the, the big project that's coming this summer uh, in the park system is Madrona Park. Uh, there is, there's going to be uh, an arboretum, a walking trail. Uh, staff is, is currently working on installing a couple additional small uh, play toys there. Uh -huh. There'll be a new bathroom. Uh, a lot of things going on at Madrona Park. So for that's... people who don't know where Madrona Park is in general, can you tell us where it is? It is in the, the uh, southeast part of town. Okay. So if, you, uh, if you're on Highway 99 and you, you're heading towards Corvallis, take a left uh, there at Dairy Queen maybe yeah. and, and follow that road uh, a number of blocks and you'll come to Madrona okay. Park. Okay, okay. So it's not one of those parks like Main Street Park where we know it's right there. You kind yeah. of have to look for it if you don't live in that area. Yeah, if you, if you don't live in the neighborhood, you may not know it's there, but it's a big park. It's a big yeah. park, and it yeah. sounds like it's going to have, like, just walking paths for regular, because it's, I don't know what the parameter is, but I've seen it, and it seems like that would be a nice place to go do some walking. It is, and, and I know a lot of the folks in that, in that neighborhood uh, do get out and walk, and so it'll just be a, a little area that they can get off the streets mm -hmm. uh, into the park and, mm -hmm. and enjoy that. Now, Monmouth has a number of parks that aren't readily visible. Is that right? Yeah, we, we call them pocket parks or neighborhood parks, and, and they're usually uh, about the size of a, a city lot or maybe two. Uh, there'll be, you know, a couple of small toys, whether that's a swing set, a climbing mm -hmm. toy, and a slide. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just some open area for the, the people that live in that neighborhood, somewhere for them to go and, and recreate. Yeah, I've seen recently, I guess because the weather's been so beautiful, some of the neighborhood parks, people have birthday parties or family reunions and things like that there. Yeah, that's correct. And, and how does that happen? Do they have to get permission to do that? Uh, if you're if you're just using a park and you're not you know setting up a a, a big event, mm -hmm. uh, then the parks are open for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a couple of parks that are reservable, and and Main Street has the gazebo. Uh, yeah. Folks can uh, rent that or reserve. See that. a lot of birthday parties happening yes. in that gazebo. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Gentle Woods has a real nice uh, structure down in the lower end of it that's mm -hmm. reservable. And then uh, Madrona Park has a, a shelter that you can reserve for uh, functions. And they do that by uh, calling City Hall, and uh, uh, they'll direct you to the right uh, okay. person. Okay, so through the website or calling City Hall, That's correct. they can reserve space for a reunion or an event. Yep, and I encourage folks that if they think they're uh, going to do that, to, to get on it ahead of time, because those, those uh, facilities fill up pretty do quickly. They? Yeah. Do they? Oh, that's good to yeah. know. And that must feel gratifying for you to know that you guys are working on this stuff all the time. Yeah. It must be really gratifying when you go by and see people laughing and 
having fun. Absolutely. And, and our park system is getting used a lot more. And, and I use the, the, uh, the gauge for that is how much trash are we pulling out of the, uh -huh. the parks and the garbage cans. And, and uh, in the past uh, five years, we've just seen a nice steady increase in, in mm -hmm. park use. And that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a real positive thing. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're you've been at this director job for two years and you've had lots of challenges which I you mightily overcome thank you for that and, but I wonder what's like your favorite part what's been the best part for you uh, I think what I like about my job is that it's different every day mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there's some days I get home at the end of the day and I just laugh at what I had to deal with that particular <laughs> day I, it, it can be so obscure or or off the wall but but mm -hmm. it's still uh, it's a part of the job it's something mm -hmm. that you do mm -hmm. uh, I I enjoy the fact that I'm investing in my community mm -hmm. I live here I, I pay the same rates as the folks that that are here I drink that same water uh, uh, and so uh, to me it's that that opportunity uh, to really invest in in where I live mm -hmm. well I appreciate that mm -hmm. I really do I appreciate the spirit with which you serve I appreciate seeing the people in your department around all the time, always working, always generous with their goodwill and smiles. And so thank you very much for doing mm -hmm. that for well, all of us. I would certainly put my, uh, my staff, my department up against any in the state. I, mm -hmm. I truly believe that they are the, the best in the state. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Uh, my pleasure. And thank you for being with us. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for being with us today here on Polk Salad and being a part of these fabulous conversations about the fascinating things that go on behind the scenes to keep us healthy and happy every day. Hopefully you'll see us again here on these channels uh, in MyNet and on Charter through Winpeg, the cities of Monmouth and Independence and Western Oregon University. And until then, see you around town. Thank you.